Dozens are dead and more than 200 have been injured in coordinated jihadist attacks in Brussels, Belgium. Apparently, even after the recent attacks in Paris, even with European security agencies working night and day to keep their people safe, even with regular arrests and multiple terrorist plots foiled, our governments just can't stop all the terrorists. Since jihad is now a way of life in the West, and since every terrorist attack carried out in the name of Allah is followed by the same sequence of events, let's briefly consider what we can all look forward to in the near future. First, for the next week or so, we'll have to listen to politicians and reporters praise Islam. They're so desperate to convince us that jihad has nothing to do with Allah's repeated commands to wage jihad that they'll shower Islam with approval and accolades, insisting that it's a religion of peace and tolerance, that it promotes education and women's rights, and that it's done nothing but help the development of Western nations. They'll even misquote Quran verses they've never actually read, giving them a meaning Muhammad never intended. The takeaway message for terrorists, of course, is that the more people you kill, the more our leaders and the media will praise your religion. Second, certain people who are better informed and less cowardly than our current leaders will try to expose the true origins of jihad. They'll show that the Quran says, fight those who do not believe in Allah. O prophets, strive hard against the unbelievers and the hypocrites and be unyielding to them. O you who believe, fight those of the unbelievers who are near to you and let them find in you hardness. Be not weary and faint-hearted, crying for peace when you should be uppermost. Muhammad is the messenger of Allah, and those who are with him are severe against disbelievers and merciful among themselves. They'll point out that Muhammad didn't say, I have been made victorious with love and interfaith dialogue. He said, I have been made victorious with terror. Terrorism was Muhammad's weapon of choice. And because these individuals expose the source of Islamic terror, because they draw attention to what Islam teaches, they'll be labeled bigots, hate mongers, Islamophobes, and racists, as if there's some sort of connection between being able to read words off a page and being a racist. Third, Muslim organizations like CARE and ISNA will once again insist that Muslims are the true victims of Islamic terrorist attacks. No matter how many non-Muslims are slaughtered in the name of Allah, no matter how many limbs are lost among the injured, no matter how many families have to mourn, according to CARE and ISNA, Muslims are the real victims because Islamic terrorist attacks often lead to concerns about Muslim immigrants, Muslim refugees, and so on. But instead of simply telling their listeners, hey, don't condemn Muslims who had nothing to do with the attacks in Brussels and who don't support terrorism, instead of sharing some sort of reasonable message, CARE and ISNA will use the fear of an anti-Muslim backlash to block any sort of criticism or honest discussion of Islam. CARE and ISNA thus end up using the bodies of slain Belgians to further the cause of their religion. Same goal as ISIS, just different methods. Fourth, because millions of Westerners will be bombarded with rosy pictures of Islam, and because they'll be brainwashed into thinking that anyone who questions this flowery picture of Islam is a racist, Islamophobic, hate-mongering bigot, a small percentage of these Westerners will convert to Islam based on what they hear. There's always a wave of conversions after terrorist attacks because there's always a portion of the population who are thoroughly gullible and will convert without bothering to do the slightest bit of genuine research. A few years from now, these converts will be paraded on various news channels and at Muslim events to show that Islam can't possibly be hostile to the West since so many Westerners are converting to it. Fifth, a few people who aren't easily manipulated or controlled We'll take this time to learn something about Islam, not from clueless politicians or reporters or from deceptive groups like CARE, but from the Muslim sources. And since people slowly coming to recognize the source of Islamic terror is really the only positive outcome of terrorist attacks, I'm directing this towards those of you who'd like to understand jihad. Let's read what Muhammad says about his mission. Sahih Muslim 126. It was narrated from Abu Hurairah that the Messenger of Allah said, I have been commanded to fight the people until they bear witness that none has the right to be worshipped but Allah, and believe in me and that which I have brought. 
If they do that, their blood and wealth are protected from me, except for a right that is due, and their reckoning will be with Allah. Muhammad says that he's been commanded to fight people until they say, there's no God but Allah and Muhammad is his prophet. When are your blood and your wealth safe from him? When you convert to Islam. Does this sound like self-defense or does it sound like what we just witnessed in Brussels? Let me know in the comments section. If you'd like to know more, I have three videos that are essential for understanding the terrorist attack in Brussels. The first is a short video called The Jihad Triangle. It explains why some Muslims wage jihad while most others don't. The second is a longer video called Three Stages of Jihad. It explains in detail why there are both peaceful and violent passages in the Quran and how these passages are reconciled in the life of Muhammad. The third video is an academic debate on the topic, Is the Quran a Book of Peace? I did this debate last year with Shabir Ali after the terrorist attack in Chattanooga. I don't want you mindlessly accepting whatever I happen to say, so it's good to watch a debate to see how a Muslim scholar responds to my claims. If you learn the material in these videos, you will be immune to the volley of misinformation that follows every terrorist attack, and you'll be able to help others escape the web of propaganda. Since future generations depend on what we do right now, better get started.